Hey, what's cracking everyone? Today I'm going to share with you a video that I've been working on for the last several months that dates way back to April of 2025 when I visited Expona. I stopped in, I met the Gishelli Labs team there because I was interested in checking out one of their highly praised DAX, the J3 Pro. While I was talking with Sherry of Gishelli, she actually mentioned to me how much fun it could be if I was doing some op amp swapping in the J3 Pro and then shared that experience with all of you. I went downstairs and I met with Andrew Sparks of Sparkos and told him about my interest in this little op amp swap project and he thought it would be a lot of fun as well. So he provided with me right then and there this particular op amp that I'll introduce here in a minute and let me take it home with me. This is for the RCA output of the J3 Pro, by the way. So then when I went home in the coming weeks, I had emailed Burson Audio, told them about this project as well, and they were also very accommodating. They said I really needed to check out their new V7 series of op amps, both the Vivid and the Classic, and so they sent those over to me as well. Now these are gonna be for the balanced output of the J3 Pro. So this sets up this video now for all of you guys because I have spent some time with the J3 Pro, with the different op amps, swapping them in and out to get kind of an opinion of the sound signature it can provide and the different ways it can cater to your sound preferences and also how simple of a process this truly is to do. And one last huge thank you to the Gishelli Labs team, to Sparkos, and to Burson for allowing me to do this video, guys. Thank you so very much. All right, so let me cover all the components that I use in this video just in case you are interested in this same setup so you know what the cost is going to look like. First of all, the Gishelli Labs J3 Pro will set you back about 530 bucks, and that is if you do not get the USB module installed. Now, if you do get the USB module installed, it's going to be 580. By the way, that is with their stock op amps. That's with no upgrades at all. The Sparkos Labs op amps that I have sitting right here. These are the SS2590 and they do have the Super Dual Dip 8 adapter installed. That Dual Dip 8 adapter has to be installed in order to use it with the J3 Pro. Now you can order these with it installed or without. I was given this with the adapter installed and it'll set you back about 126 bucks. Now the Burson op amps that I have here, these are the new V7 series op amps. These are gonna set you back $176, and that is whether you get the Vivid or the Classic. The orange here is the Classic, the red here is the Vivid. And the Vivid is gonna be the most similar to the Sparkos, by the way, in case you're wanting to follow along with that. Now, the included op amps on the Gishelli Labs J3 Pro are called the TI OPA 1656. And like I said, those are the stock options that are gonna be installed on the J3 Pro. In total, if you wanted to get this exact same package that I have here, it would be roughly $1,000 for all three op amp options and for the DAC. But if you wanted to do just the DAC and one of these op amp options, you're looking at probably 750 bucks. But obviously, like I said, you can order the op amp separately and use them on your own gear as long as they will work with that. And there's a listing on their site to tell you exactly all the different gear that these are gonna work with. Because I will tell you, they even work on sound cards from Creative Labs. They'll work on amplifiers, many, many different things you can swap the op amps on without having to go the route of desoldering, which that is a much more difficult way to swap the op amps, albeit not completely impossible. All right, so along with that, let me talk to you about the rest of the setup that I have sitting in front of me here. I did use the J3 Pro mostly with the shit Midgard through all of this. I find the Midgard to be a nice, somewhat clean solid state amplifier to provide a really good idea of what a headphone's gonna sound like compared to a DAC with that type of synergy. There's not a lot of flavoring up going with Midgard. It's a great reviewer's amp, as many have called it, and it truly is. The headphone sitting here is the Hi-Fi for All Dahlia. This is a high-end dynamic driver headphone. It's a fantastic headphone in my opinion. It's very easy to drive, it's energetic, it's dynamic, and I think it really is a good pairing with all this to pinpoint out the differences that I heard between the different op amps once I swapped them out. I did also use my Viologic V281 LE that I recently did a video on with the J3 Pro just to get an idea of that type of flavoring. And I haven't told you my experience swapping the op amps on these and then listening to the V281, which I will do that here later in the video as well. Okay. 
As I am walking through this, I am gonna tell you once again that I do recommend watching that video from Rachel of Gicelli Labs for how she does the J3 Pro because I'm gonna zip through this much faster than what she did. I will tell you that I recommend getting some type of an extra large desk mat, mouse pad, something like that to put all these components on. Now hold on a second really quick before you get into this. I wanna warn you guys, if you've never done something like this before or even if you had, don't try to hot swap this. And what I mean by hot swap is leaving something plugged in, whether it's the power cable or the interconnects or anything, completely unplug all of that when you are swapping out the op amps just to be safe so that you don't damage your gear or the components that you're using. I know a lot of us might wanna think, well, I wanna quickly do it so I can AB it really fast. Don't be that guy, don't be that person unless you're highly, highly experienced and know what you're doing. Just take my advice, unplug it all, do it the right way. All right, and so when you get started, the first thing that you're gonna do is obviously get the right adapters for your screws, get your screwdriver ready, and you're gonna basically take out the screws that surround the RCA and the XLRs. And then once that is done, you're gonna take apart the screws that are on the back plate of the DAC. Once that is done, you flip around, you take out the screws out of the front plate, keep your screws you know, neatly set apart so that you know which ones are which, just in case and then you slide the board out, very simple. Now, when you slide the board out, you're gonna notice the op amps that are pre-installed. Now, the unbalanced op amp is gonna be found right behind the RCA outputs, so that one's easy to just go ahead and pop right off, and then you can set that aside on your mat. The balanced op amps are actually found more inside the board, and they're kind of next to each other there. Again, those are easy to pop on off. Now, when you are inserting your op amps, it is very important on the pins that you look on the back and you are gonna notice that you have, you know, the eight pins that are gonna line up just like they will on the board. But you need to notice that one side of that is gonna be flat the other side has this kind of banana or half moon shape on it. That needs to be lined up with the same indentation on the board itself because if you do this backwards, you're gonna do some damage to your unit. I highly recommend to put these over the pins carefully before you push down we're not doing a speed build here or anything like that. Just, you know, put them down over where they're supposed to go. You push down, they'll pop into place and you're good to go. You'll do the same thing for the balanced. The balanced ones on the Burson will be the same type deal here. You're gonna notice the flat side and then the side that has that indentation and they simply go over the op amp as well and you'll push down and they'll pop into place. Super easy to install and they are not going to hit the top of the board or anything like that, so don't worry about that when you're sliding it back in. When you are sliding the board back into the casing, you do need to be careful of which groove that you put that back into. It should be that second groove from the bottom because that lines everything up with the faceplate. Pretty easy once you get it lined up and you just slide it right through, and then basically you are going to reinstall all of your screws backwards from how you uninstall them. It's kind of the way we do a lot of these things as it is. Once you have all the screws put back in, you are good to go and power this baby up. And what was really nice about this setup is I went through and I used the Sparkos with the RCA, and then I used the Burson V7 Vivids first, so I could compare the two. Now the Vivids with the Sparkos are pretty much the same type of signature if you read and you kind of research that. They're both supposed to be very transparent, very detailed. And I definitely noticed that with both of these when I powered on the J3 Pro and I hooked it up to the Midgard and I listened on the Dahlia. In fact, what I highly recommend doing is listening to one for quite a while, getting that kind of burned into your brain. So that's what I did. I listened on the Sparkos first through several tracks and was getting a feel for how the DAC was sounding on the Midgard. And then I paused the music I flipped to the balanced output from the Midgard, and then I started listening to the V7 Vivids. And honestly, guys, this was really hard to tell a difference. To me, it's kind of like using filters on a DAC at times. That's kind of the sound difference that I found. What I really found once I really dove in and listened and AB back and forth was I feel like the Vivids are ever so slightly more dynamic and have just a little bit sharper of an edge than the Sparkos 2590 did. But I'm talking about really teeny tiny and not always noticeable. In fact, 
I would say if you're listening to this back and forth and not really paying attention, you wouldn't really notice a difference at all. That's how good both of those op amps are. And so that's why I would say if you're interested in either of these, you know, hopefully that will kind of help you out there. Now, when I say slightly more edge to it, slightly more dynamic, I say that because the Dahlia, like I said, it's a fast dynamic driver headphone. It's very resolving, but it can be speedy. And that's what I found both of those to provide and complement that headphone. And that's where I said the 2590 ever so slightly, I picked up on that a little less, which could be something that you want. Honestly, I mean, don't forget that. This is all about preference of sound. Okay, so then I went ahead and popped out the op amps and on the V7 anyway, and I switched over to the Classic. Now the Classic is supposed to be a more colored variation of sound. It is not supposed to be quite as dynamic as the Vivid. It'll still maintain excellent details and transparency, and that's exactly what I heard. The Classic was softer on the edging and kind of had a little bit more of that warmth tonality to it while maintaining some brightness. I didn't find any difference really in bass response other than I will tell you with the Vivids and with the 2590s, I do think those had better extension of bass, just a little bit better and a little bit more control of the low end response as well. This is that coloration I'm talking about with the Classic. So if you want something a tiny bit more loose, something like that, that's where you'd go with the Classic. Not anything like a tube, so don't get me wrong, it is not gonna do that type of coloration to your sound because you do still maintain good detailing. I also noticed the sound stage and staging just in general to be a little bit further in than on the Vivid or on the 2590, and that holographic imaging was a little bit better on the Vivid and the 2590 as well. Again, this is more of a, I would say it's more of a musical sound with the classic, which could be really enjoyable. In fact, I enjoyed it quite a bit and was something that, you know, I would recommend getting like a classic and a Vivid or a classic and a 2590 as your setup because that can definitely give you some altered flavors in one. And it's just a fun experience to do that. And not to mention, just like I said, how detailed and how, how much precision they have to my audio was uh, very impressive. All right, so a couple of more things I wanna take you through. First of all was how these compared to the stock op amps. Now, to be honest with you guys, I really noticed it more so with the V281 than I did on the Midgard. With the V281, it was definitely apparent that these were upgrades over the stock op amps on the J3 Pro. And don't get me wrong, the stock op amps are very good because they mesh really well with the Midgard, but it just took the detailing, that transparency, and that dynamic, just range to it and everything up another level and up another notch when I compared it to the V281 to where I actually enjoyed it. And in my original video on the V281, I said that I didn't really enjoy the J3 Pro nearly as much as the Cyan 2. And I gotta say, once I swapped out the op amps, it became much closer to my experience with the Cyan 2 and just provided some damn good synergy to the V281. So I definitely wanna experience that a little bit more and yeah, I mean, I still am very happy with the op amps that I've upgraded with here and would still recommend these over the stock op amps, but it is worth trying them out just to see what you think and to hear for yourself. All right, so as I'm wrapping up this video, I wanna remind you guys, as I do many times in this channel, that I'm not an audio engineer and I still consider myself a novice when it comes to things like this, but I am very happy that I experienced this and I would tell you that if you're just getting into this hobby, this may not be something you dive into right away. You might wanna get into maybe trying out different amps or DACs first or tube swapping, but don't let this scare you. This is something that can really be a lot of fun to tinker with and experience. And I gotta send another thank you to Sherry of Gishelli because without her convincing me to do this, I don't know if I would have dove into this yet. And I'm so happy that I did. In fact, I would say this has been more fun than tube swapping because I've done some tube swapping that actually didn't have a good result and I wasn't very flattered by it. Whereas this was definitely a better result, especially when I paired it up to my V281. Wow, just the, the difference was impressive enough for me. This is better than I would say filters can be, but this is truly that extra bit of percentage little bit of extra flavoring to your audio, a little bit catering to your preferences of audio that I think a lot of audiophiles are missing out on if you have not done this yet. So this is me recommending to you to try this out 
if you've been looking into it and haven't pulled the trigger on it yet, if it's on your bucket list, come on, go check it off and go do this. And the other thing I would say is don't get hung up so much on whether or not you should go with the Classic or the Vivid or the 2590. You know, the Vivids have this aluminum casing that is for heat dissipation, which is nice if you got a DAC or an amp that runs really hot, that will help push some of that away from it. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the 2590 still sounded just as good, if not better, if it depends on your preferences in many cases. And you know what, it's about 50 bucks less. So I highly recommend any of these. And I truly don't think you can really go wrong. It's just going right by trying to experience something different, which is something I always like to do and something I always recommend doing in this hobby. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. I wanna thank all of you so much for watching this and spending some time with me again today. Guys, I will see you in the next one.